Okay, so I already had some code written up for this example um, that basically just waits for a trigger word, then waits to hear either open or close and respond. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Let's start at the top. You want to always include these two header files, the tech library and then the demo IO. And this basically allows you to use the voice GP correctly and smoothly with some shorthand commands to turn LEDs on or off and call out different commands. Okay, then the next thing you want to do is include all of these header files you see here over here. And it's pretty easy to do that. Just make sure you start off with the folder in the project folder followed by the actual file name. So just exactly as it's written out here, put over here. Okay, then we're going to have a variable where we're going to basically store all the voice recognition data. And let's go ahead and start the loop. We have two variables, one error, one class. Then we can do a little beep for 500 milliseconds to let us know the program started. Let's turn a green LED on, make sure the red one's off. And then we'll go over here and start listening for the trigger word. Okay, so we have a while, an infinite loop here all the way down to here. And it basically goes there and waits for this error here to be to give it an error OK message. Okay, so all of this doesn't happen until this OK message happens. And you can't get that until it reads from the T2SI, which basically is listening on the microphone, waiting to hear that trigger word. Okay, so it's pretty cool and easy to do. Um, let's start off and talk about this big long mess of code right here. So if you go in the help thing and look at this T2SI, it tells you whatever, how it needs to be set up and everything you need. So you'll need an acoustic model, the grammar, the knob, timeout, trailing, and also where you're going to store everything. Okay, so the first thing you'll see here is the acoustic model. And to find this, this part of it's always standard, but this NN thing you find by clicking either one of these recognition header files and just go in and look for this little NN thing here. Just copy that and put that over there. Okay. Then the grammar setup thing is this whole thing here, this G long and G search trig. Go back into one of those, um, well, we're listening for the trigger, so click the trigger one. And you'll see it right up here for the G search. And copy that and put that down there. Okay, then we have the T2SA default knob. I'm just using the default setting for that. And that's basically how strict is it going to listen to your recognition. You know, so it's kind of trying to put it together and figure out, you know, what's acceptable. You know, how close do you have to be to the word in order for it to get past the trigger. Okay, then I have the default timeout. I think it's about three seconds. It'll listen for... Um, then we have the trailing, which is a little silence it adds. And that also where we're storing the results. Okay, and that's it. That's all you need. So it's a little tricky to set it up just right like that, but once you get it, it's pretty simple. Then whatever that error you know gives us back, we don't care until it gives us an error okay. Okay, then we'll do a little beep. We'll turn the yellow LED on, and we just go right back into listening to the um, to the command words. So we listen for the trigger, we get an OK, then we go back and we listen now for the command words. The only thing that changes between this and this is that grammar thing. Now we take the G search thing out of the grammar or the command header file, which is right up here. Okay. So we do that, everything else, same, same knob, same timeout, same trailing, same results even. And right after we get that, let's store the results as class. And you got to set up the results like this dot pp underscore b. Turn the yellow LED off. And also, if it timed out, it would just you know blow past this. Okay. Now we go into here and we get we we set up a little if statement. And this is uh, basically if the class is equal to this gcom trig for vid not a, or if our error gives us low confidence level over here. Okay. Then we basically turn the red LED on and then turn the red LED off. So this is if we don't read anything right. And you might wonder what this not A thing is. You just got to go over back to your header file, 
go into your command header file for the recognition and you'll see this is all of the, the things that that class could be any of these okay and the last one is this not a which is basically none of the above okay so that means that it got something just nothing of none of these okay so if we go back it could either if so if it got nothing we do that but if it does get something then we do a little else here and then go into the if error is okay which is the same thing we did before with getting into this whole thing from the trigger word is right here okay and we probably didn't even need we, we probably could have got rid of all of this code right here and just had it look like something like that and that would have been okay okay so we're gonna accept it if the error is okay or even if the recognition is at a medium confidence level and that's what this is and you can look up all these error levels in the in the help book and all that okay so pretty simple here to if statement so if the class is equal to that gcom trig for vid open so if you went back to the uh, this header file here you can see which what you could get back the open or the close and this is what you made in the quick t2si okay so pretty cool stuff and you could have this really long you know and you can have this if this whole algorithm to read all these ifs you know if it's this do that if it's that do this you know okay so if it gives us an open we play a sound open and to do this it's pretty simple again we do an underscore play sound the actual sound which is sound open so you go into your audio and here's the two sounds we built up from the quick synthesis so sound open Oh, and also don't forget about this sound table up here because you'll need that to put on the next one right here. And then you have your volume. I think that's volume for this. And you can look all this up too again and play sounds and do different things with it. Clean it up. Play it at a higher quality, whatever. Okay, so play the sound open. If the class is equal to the close recognition, then play the sound close. And that's it. And then when it's done with that, it falls out of that whole if statement and goes back and starts listening for the trigger word okay so that's it then you want to go up to build build all and let me pull this up a little bit make sure you get a build successful down here make sure that this after you plug it in make sure that this is here telling you that the voice GP boards hooked up then just go ahead and hit the download button and let's give it a test okay let's see Okay, there's that system beep. Robot, open. Opening. Okay, pretty cool, huh? Then it goes back to the trigger word. Robot, close. Close. Okay, so that's that little code right there working for you. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless just with this simple code. And in future videos, we'll get into the voice rec verification where it only recognizes my voice and a couple other things. So I hope that uh, that gets you started with this thing. So it's, there's a lot of cool stuff we can do here. Um, thanks for watching.